Welcome to section 2.4 on spatial geometric algebra, which is geometric algebra in three-dimensional space. For generating the spatial geometric algebra, we need to assume the right-handed vector basis, e sub 1, e sub 2, and e sub 3. We can generate the following independent bivectors, which also form a basis, and then if you product together all of the basis vectors, you can create what's known as a tri-vector, which you'll see that this is the pseudoscalar of spatial geometry. This tri-vector corresponds to sweeping the bivector e sub 1, e sub 2 along the vector e sub 3, which results in a three-dimensional directed volume. Therefore, this algebra is spanned by following items, or entities, and is a graded linear space of total dimension 8. We denote this capital G sub 3. So each basis bivector in this space shares the properties of the single bivector in two dimensions, meaning they all square to negative 1 and they all generate 90 degree rotations within their own plane. To further understand this product, though, between a vector and a bivector, consider the general vector A and general ve bivector B. We first decompose A into terms in and out of the plane, meaning that this is A that's within the plane, parallel to the plane of B, and this is perpendicular to the plane of B. And then we can always find a vector B such that A, a parallel wedge B is equal to by vector b and this shows us that the product between a parallel to b is just a vector that is dilated by the magnitude of the vector squared and when you multiply it by the perpendicular component you get a tri vector so in general a product between a vector and a bivector vector has vector and tri vector terms to further explore this let's form the product of a and b wedge c from the associative and distributive properties we get the following and then using some rearrangements we get the below terms, which in the next slide simplify to this. So the right-hand side is a vector, so the anti-symmetrized product of a vector with a bivector is another vector. Since this operation is grade lowering, we denote it with the dot symbol, which proves one of the most useful formulas in ge geometric algebra. One can view this when we take the inner product of a vector and a bivector as projecting the vector's parallel component onto the plane of B, rotating it by 90 degrees and dilating it by the magnitude of bivector B. We also see that a vector dot a bivector is anti-symmetric. And for the wedge product, it is grade raising, so we denote it with the wedge. And this is what gives us a tri-vector. This gives us the full ve vector bivector definition when we product them together. And just like the geometric product of vectors, it can be represented in these two decompositions. And it's also useful to know that this full product is invertible. So we have considered how bivectors square to give a scalar, but what if two bivectors are orthogonal to each other? We find that it produces a third bivector and that their product is anti-symmetric. So let's introduce the following basis notation for bivectors. You might be wondering why don't we have b sub one b e sub 1 and e sub 2. It's because this provides a much easier way to, to remember them as being the only cyclic permutations. Because 1, 2, 3 is cyclic, 2, 3, 1 is cyclic, 3, 1, 2 is cyclic. Therefore, their product satisfies the following equation. And then, if you notice the following properties, then you can easily prove that these are the generators of quaternion algebra, and so quaternions are therefore bivectors. However, with quaternions, ijk is equal to negative 1, while bivectors b sub 1, b sub 2, b sub 3 is equal to positive 1. This shows that we must flip a sign of one bivector such that it's equal to negative 1. This implies that quaternions are a left-handed set of bivectors, whereas Hamilton and those who created quaternions tried to view them as a right-handed set of vectors, which is obviously significantly less intuitive. Now moving on to the trivector, given vectors a, b, and c, the trivector a wedge b wedge c is formed by sweeping a wedge b along c. You get the same result though by sweeping b sub wedge c along a. The trivector is therefore associative, and hopefully these pictures at the bottom provide a visual good visualization tool. Considering the right-handed pseudoscalar for g sub 3, give it the standard symbol i, and then you can prove easily that a wedge b wedge c is equal to some scalar alpha times i, where the magnitude of alpha is the volume of the trivector a wedge b wedge c. The sign encodes the handedness of the trivector. Now if you consider a vector times the trivector, it returns a bivector in the plane perpendicular to the original vector. 
and then you can easily prove that i commutes with all vectors. But this is only the case in odd dimensions. In even dimensions, which we saw in planar geometric algebra, it anti-commutes. Therefore, in three dimensions, we can express each by basis bivector in the following form, which is known as a duality transformation, and that is something that Grassman proposed. Again, we denote this with a dot because it's grade lowering. Also, if we square the pseudoscalar of the third dimension, it squares to negative one, therefore proving that it is a good candidate for the imaginary unit. If we consider the product of a pseudoscalar and a bivector, it returns a vector perpendicular to the bivector, which is exactly what the cross product does. However, the cross product is quite redundant when we have the outer product in duality. But it has some interesting properties to take note of. However, it's not necessarily used the cross product because it is less intuitive than duality and outer products. And the last interesting thing about G sub 3 algebra is that the full geometric product for vectors in this space may be written in the following form, which, if you may notice, is the Pauli algebra of quantum mechanics, which gives the Pauli spin matrices as follows, which satisfy the following equation right here. And if you notice, this is the same equation as here. Therefore, the equations that describe the three-dimensional vector space are identical to the equations that describe the Pauli spin matrices. This is a really neat example of how useful geometric algebra is because quantum properties just emerge out of the mathematics. Thank you for watching. This next lesson will be on section 2.5, which are conventions of geometric algebra. It'll be a relatively short lesson because there's not much to cover there.